Yeah, we're waiting. Well, we're nine. Nine. Well, we're the booby prize. Lecture in our series for this spring. Tonight we have uh, Jerry Lumpkins. Jerry Lumpkins is the spotlight there. I can't see. Um, <coughs> he's a lifetime educator in Sumner County. Almost a lifelong member of Sumner County. You were like uh, how old were you? You were we moved here in the first grade with TVA. Uh huh. Nineteen sixty two. Okay, so you could say you're definitely native of Gallatin. Right. He uh, graduated from Middle Tennessee State University, a degree in, in uh, PE and recreation. And he began collecting historical items in college. Uh, he has uh, taught the PE coaching and uh, assistant principal and his first love is history, though I understand from his wife. She said that, she's, that he loves history and then her. <laughs> and that they have a museum in their attic. attic in their upstairs bonus room. So anyway, this is probably only just a little part of it, but I'm sure he's got plenty up here to tell us. And we're looking forward to it. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you very much. My name again was Jerry Lumpkins. And I want to point out one person in here in the back red shirt. This was my history teacher at Gallatin High School. You, you're Robert. confusing me with body writing. So. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> red shirt. And uh, that's where I really got picked up on history. Because it's like, the first thing I said was, hmm, wow, didn't know that. But as you get into Gallatin, it's amazing how much history happened right here. Uh, I spoke to the uh, Rotary Club the other day, and I even mentioned about how many presidents of the United States came through Gallatin. And that's not on our issue tonight, but there, it's just amazing how, how Sumner County and Gallatin is just historic. <coughs> but now tonight, what I've got to show you, it starts out, it's all postcards. And uh, the point of the first sheets that were handed out in your seat just talked about when postcards kind of got started. It was right before the 1900s. And uh, here in America, it really didn't, didn't really take over until about uh, 1902, 1903, somewhere right through there. And it cost every bit of one penny to mail that postcard. Now, uh, Things happen, and uh, I've got my backup right here just in case my voice goes. I've got a backup here. We had even a, we even had a balloon that dropped a letter here in Gallatin that became the first air mail. If I could use the word air, it's really a balloon uh, mail that came through and was delivered right here over by the railroad track. That's another story. But when you look at Gallatin, I have tried to look between the GAI. Look at those buildings back behind. And I, you know, I can get this one. I recognize that one, but the rest of them, mm, that's going to be up to you. We might have a pop quiz test since I've been a teacher. Third starting 36 years ago. But, uh, you know, the things that we're trying to understand, when was Gallatin established? I, I've got in my history books talking about 1802. Correct me if I'm wrong. But actually, we weren't organized and put into motion until, I understand, 1803. And if you look at our downtown, or, or if you even try to figure out where Gallatin started, we've got the Trousdale House, and he came through here. Uh, but Gallatin Square, I mean, it's right behind us. And we're going to show some pictures of some of the buildings all around there. I've even got a Civil War drawing that you'll see up here. Um, talks about the Civil War. But Gallatin was named after a gentleman called Albert Gallatin. Now, you know, when they named cities all over Tennessee, Nash, then the word Ville stops out. Murphy's Borough. And it just goes on and on and on. We're one of the, it's seldom that you just get the name of one man. But that's what Gallatin is, is named after Albert Gallatin, to my understanding, he never made it here. They were just very honored to him because he was the United States Secretary of Treasury. And uh, that's how they just, I mean, we were out west at one time. That's, what, that's hard to remember also. Now, Sumner County, that was named after a American uh, war hero, General Joseph Sumner. Jethro. Jethro Sumner, thank you, see? 
I get it. So that's, I didn't make a hundred on tonight's stuff. I know 99 so far. <laughs> but uh, when it was started to be created, we were still part of North Carolina. And they were just trying to get us out, kind of get us out and go from there. Okay, let's go through these. Now, that I said, I don't, I, maybe y'all can help me figure out what's behind the G and what's behind the I. It's a shoe factory, isn't it? I see the downtown courthouse right there. Right. On the A, I can't tell. Is that the uh, Howard School? Yeah. With the big tall beams up front? Yeah. The old Howard School. When it was female college. Yeah, that's it. I think I is the shoe factory. Thing. Wonder what Janesco. See those windows? Wonder what the eyes. Janesco maybe? Yeah. Could be. Which one's the Church of Christ? In the middle. That's the first church. Now before you leave, I have I have every one of these on a postcard. Most of them have information on the back where somebody mailed it all the way to South Tom. Just to say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, uh, and if some of them have a price in it, please just, I'm sorry if I left it in there. Okay, I'm going to try the remote to try to change it. Oh, I did. Okay, that's where we're sitting right now. Yep. Now, this building started out as Central High School. And it just, uh, <coughs> look how beautiful that is. After it was left becoming the Central High School, anybody remember what happened to be in there next? I've got a video of what the next building was, the next business that was in there. Shoe factory. Shoe factory. Is it Janesco? No, it was not what it is. General Shoe? Yeah. What it is found Mr. Williams and uh -huh. the other guy. Maxie John. Frank John. Yeah. Frank John. His father. Maxie's father. Now this is downtown Gallup. And if you just go past where our old post office used to be, over at Howard. Well, let me back up and talk about this. This is a drawing that came out of the Civil War. Uh, about our downtown gallery. There's the courthouse. There's soldiers. Uh, there was a, I'm not sure when this bank came in that sat right there, but this is the road that goes down to the, this is the south side, way over there. But that's a drawing that uh, a gentleman, a ninth lieutenant, drew from Gallup. He was a Yankee. Yeah, that's correct. He was a Union soldier. That is absolutely correct. Let me go to the next one. There's what I was going to talk to you about. That's right past where our old post office used to be. And look at the name of it. Right now it's an apartment house. Let me see exactly what it says. Main Street High School. Now, if you've ever been in that building, I don't know how many students could actually go in there to be there. Where is it now? Still standing. It's at yeah. the park. <laughs> Just past yeah. Howard. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. It's an apartment house. Yes. Right it's it's yeah. beige, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that looks good. Okay, now we come back one step toward us right now. This, this is Howard Female Institute. Now, the research that I found on this, it started as, the, and the last word was institute. This started in 1859, 1856, I'm so sorry, 1856. Then it changed into Gallatin Female Academy. And uh, I was a, when it turned out to be Howard Elementary School, I was a second grader there back in 1968. <coughs> but it sure doesn't look like that when I came through there. No, it didn't. It was about 1932. Was it added on to or completely torn down? They tore it down. Completely. Yes. Wow. I was there. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. And that's the past. 
fact, I've showed that postcard earlier. There's one in the back. If you know anybody that's, uh, I have these postcards. There's a lady's name. Mother Rankin. She married Mr. Soul. Rankin. But again, like I told you, I've got everything you're saying today. I've got them right here. Maybe we've already seen that. I'm going in the right direction. Was that not pretty? There's another gal from Lady. See the date, 1908. You know her, Miss Kim? Coral Kim, I don't know her. Do you see who's written from? Now from Sumner uh, Female Academy, I don't know if you'd call this a report card or just a uh, special card that tells about how noisy you are. And you see this person has been written up because she was noisy four times. <laughs> and us teachers in here, we know exactly what's going on. Now, this is me. Idle. How do you get me? Ma'am, are you idle? I want to write you up in idle. <laughs> But being perfect, being good, you got your credits, your arrows, but that this I mean, quarrels? Oh my gosh, if they had if they had these in schools right now, they'd have to limit it to three digits on that. But that's eighteen thirty five. And I don't know who this can you read her name? B U N T O N. T O N Miss E A Button. 1833. Dr. W.P. Rolls was the president's minister for the hospital and uh, lived in the trial for place. He owned the trial for place when he lived here. He sold it to the trial for place. <coughs> now you're looking down, I hate to use this as a, a mark. You're looking down towards Captain Deeds. <coughs> That's our road. West, west uh, says Main Street. But isn't that amazing with the rock, with the sidewalks? Uh, trees are going up through there. That's a better picture there. And again, these are postcards. <laughs> That one's written to a lady a long ways from here. Has anybody ever heard of West Mall? <laughs> I was just there. For one penny, they can move it right on up. Okay, moving on. Now, those cars could probably tell you about how old this is. I'm going to guess, I've got the car in front of me. 1934. And uh, whoever wrote this wrote it to a lady in Dayton, Ohio. But that's our downtown courthouse. I think I've got quite a few of these. Beautiful. Just another side of it. Let me see. Now, before you leave, during World War I, I have a photograph of when our men from Gallatin, I'm trying to get into light right here, you can't really see a whole lot, but our men from Gallatin were lining up, ready to go to World War I. And it's 1917 is this, and it's amazing because they almost have all hat, jacket, pants, shoes, exactly the same. So that was 1917. This is on the south side of our courthouse. That's another print right there. Okay. I don't think I showed this when we first started talking, but this was the General Shoe Corporation. Mm -hmm. That's the people, I'm sorry the light may get in your way, but that's the people that are involved that were employees there. And that's, I mean, if you had to count those, I bet there's 150, 100, 
75, 200 people in there. And this, for some of you in this room, I bet your relatives are in here. Well, if you look at, at the far right of that picture, my dad's <coughs> company, uh, it says W.B. Hunter right there in that picture. It sure does. Mm -hmm. sure does. Well, you want to hold it and look at it? Okay, right across from our, uh, from the First Baptist Church, this is our Church of Christ. Again, this is a postcard. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's only one front door on this church now. Right. And if you look, there's two. I don't know if that's an entrance on one side and an exit on one. Women on one side, <laughs> men on the other. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But look, look at the road, look at the sidewalk uh, and the trees. It's amazing. Uh, let me see, I've got the date. It's written. Somebody sent this to Georgia. I don't have a print on it, but that's again, when this is over today, you'll have plenty of time to look through these. I think I have another picture of sure do. Telephone pole. What? <laughs> Said built 19, I think it's <coughs> Yes. 1914 Church of Notice the change in the name of the church. Go back to the previous picture. I'll try. They changed the name of it when they moved. Behind the belt. The church in that building up to this place. They put Church of Christ on the corner. Over there, but I still call it the Christian Church. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, they and again, the right the very center of that, they have changed it automatically. I mean, just wow. Okay, now here's something that's that I have used, and I'll tell you just a second how I've used this. Uh, this is Mr. Roth. We have Roth Jewelers up on the square. Uh, he is standing off by the counter. The little son. What's his name? Bill. Bill Roth is down there. And it's hard to see in this one. If you get to the original later on, you'll see there's a, there's a, a black gentleman in the back. But I have shown this over at the Palace Theater because the little boy, as he grew older, built the Palace Theater for his daughter. The old man built it for his daughter. Oh, for the granddaughter? No, for the daughter. For the daughter. Uh -huh. Bill had the drugs at the jewelry store and the daughter was to have the palace, but she died early of TB, so gotcha. he got both of them. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So my grade's down to about 92 now. <laughs> <laughs> but I have that original postcard, and I've used that before. When they have, uh, and, I, and I'm not promoting these people, it's called the Tennessee Rath Chasers. Uh, the ghost trips over there. I've used this to shows, because I've been tapped on the shoulder in there. Uh, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> All right, this building's still standing. I have a postcard, unused, so I don't know the date. I don't know when it was sent. But we're on the south. We're looking at the south side of the square. I see the law office is upstairs. Does anybody know anything about the law office? Harvey Brown. Okay. I'm from Echo. I've never heard Harvey Brown. So, in my garage, I have his safe. If anybody's interested in a 2,000 pound safe, I don't know how you're going to get it home. Gary, let, let me stop yeah. here. So, Kenneth, yeah. is that the Harvey Brown? Is that the father of the Harvey yes. Brown out yes. of the Castle Heights? Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Yes. Colonel Brown. Yeah. Colonel Brown's the Eddie County Court Clerk or Circuit Court Clerk. No, it's going to get done. Wow. I appreciate any input y'all do on this. That's right. <laughs> well, if you need a safe, come let me know. <laughs> have it in the garage but it's there and I don't know how they would get it on the second floor I'm telling you it weighs 2,000 pounds you can ask my wife over there when they rolled it in that's about the best we could do would that later become Galka book and Jerry store yes did R.C. Ray have a law office upstairs there yeah. I don't think it did yeah. that was later yeah later okay <laughs> Another one of our churches. Nice postcard. 
Has it been used? I don't see a date on it. I couldn't tell you exactly when, but I think we have another picture of it. That's beautiful. That's one that had the towel, the first towel. And that first card you showed until after the towel was blown off. Did lightning hit it or the wind took it? The wind. The wind, I think. Methodist Church. Now here's one of the most interesting places in Gallup, in my opinion. When I was growing up in 62, that was our post office. Okay. As I've done the research and just finding out through history and just reading about this, Andrew Jackson had a law office on our square. He would go down to the, I'll call it a restaurant, but that's where he would go and have lunch or dinner or just hang out with some of his friends. Andrew Jackson in that building. So it's, it, to me, it's amazing. What can you add to it? That building was built from the Woodrow Wilson mm -hmm. World okay. War I. The building that was there before was a big brick hotel called Washington Hall. It was built in 1802. Wow. And it stood 100 years. So that's maybe where Andrew Jackson went. That's where he went. Now are they fixing to tear that down? Yes, fixing to tear that down. <laughs> <sighs> so, nice trees. And I'm guessing that car is parked on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> I've got a degree in driver's ed, so I may have to write things up. Yeah. 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 Now there's our, uh, the years at the top, 1915, and we were at that, the new post office was open in Gallup, and if you could read that, it gives the names, and... It's got a plaque on it that says erected in 1917. That's right. What's that date? 1915. Maybe they just named started creating the name for it. It just said they just completed the that's well, Judge ben, uh, Bennett Davis Bell and Dr. Uh, Robert Means de Bolts, who's the Presbyterian minister. Wow. Okay. I need to come back to this place, somebody. You just tell me. Well, hi there. Here's our uh, picture, a postcard from downtown Gallup. Let me see if I can find, if I can get a date off that. Nineteen oh seven. And somebody from Gallup wrote that to a lady in Boston, Massachusetts. Wow. Is that the south side? No, that's the west side. West side. West side. That's the Guthrie building built in 1897. Abraham <coughs> Franklin's contractor built it for Mr. Ralph Gilbert. Uh -huh. And the popcorn. They, they, what, yeah, what between what a gate is, yeah. Okay. <coughs> I can't quit read a lot of but somebody right. I've been to ride behind some of the finest horses in this, this part, part of the country. Of the country. Okay. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken on this, this this church was built, started about 1836, and I'm not sure how long it took, probably two years at least. Uh, this is the oldest, I'll call it the oldest surviving religious building in Galton, and it's still there. Now look at the steps, how they've changed. Two telephone poles out front, there you go. Let me see who this postcard is for. They were made on that postcard to Bridgeport, Alabama. And it's got the people's name on here. Again, are we, when we finish, if you ever want to look through these, I've got a stack. Okay. Down to the last stack. Moving right along. Maybe. Anybody recognize? I mean, look at all the trees. Look at the what's the trials down there? Yeah, porch. Now, correct me on this. He donated 
the downtown acreage of they bought 45 acres for the city of Galveston. Yeah, he didn't have anything to do with building his house. John H. Bowen built it in 1814. He died in 1822 and sold several times. The trials were bought in 1836. Let me see if I can find the date on that. Dr. Rose. He got up there in the early 1830s. Yeah. I don't know the date on that postcard, but there's another. That porch was added later. The trials was added that. <coughs> Hawkins Training School. Now, without uh, my professor here telling y'all where it is, does anybody know where this was located? Or can you guess? She does. Where was it? Where the old high school was? Yeah. Galton High School? When I went there, that gym was still there. That old gym. That became Field House, didn't it? Yeah. Is, is that B.G. Hawkins family? Oh. Not Mr. Bird, you put oh. him. You travel out down East Main and go out past what used to be Captain D's. It's coming back. <laughs> go to where Scott's the Pike that spreads out. That's up on the hill where the parking lot was when I went to Gallatin High School. <laughs> up on the hill. I think I have more pictures. Look at that. How beautiful. It became Williams, after Hawkins, and GPI. Galton High School. When did they actually build the old Gallatin High School? 1888. Wow. Everybody hear that? 18, and I graduated, I was there. Not that, no, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the old one right up here. No, I'm talking about the one that I graduated. Oh, 1933. I was thinking 30. Same year, about the same old time. I was going to be burned. And then it was I've, I've seen the newspaper on that. It was set on fire just like it burned down with Notre Dame mm -hmm. with a torch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Struck by lightning. Lightning hit it. Well, that's not what I heard. <laughs> that's, what, well, that's what they claim. That's not what happened. I lived up there. I truly think that it was because I was in my bedroom uh, down the street from that and this terrible bolt of lightning came in. It did. So it really makes sense that it would have been struck by lightning. But they said they were up on the roof with a torch, too, so I don't know. Wow. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if people can guess on this one. <laughs> uh, let me give you another picture of it. Fletcher Estate. Is that water? Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it where that doesn't sit on there. Look how beautiful this is. If you've ever been to Rosemont, this was across the street from Rose Lane. I've got a better, another picture of it smaller, but this is the best one on that side right there. What's their name? Uh, the restaurant, the antique. The barn thing? The barn? Yes. Yeah. Okay. These are available when we leave. That was here. And what's behind it? Uh, there's two or three. There's a rock house that's still there. That's, this is absolutely beautiful. I've got it set up right here. Why did we lose that building? This, this house was for sale. I don't know how, how enormous the price was. I was told by Mr. Johnny Maddox, correct us, this house got down and they finally said, would somebody give us one dollar for it? One dollar. Right across from Rosemont. One dollar. And then it didn't happen. So if I'm understanding correctly, the doors came out, the windows came out, anything that could be resold happened. And this house, and correct me, I think it was set on fire, wasn't it? The guy in Hendersonville, I can't think of his name, he just died. Bought all the parts out of it. Wow. It was built in 1890 by Colonel Baxter Smith and Betty Gill. She was a daughter of the Until she was a kind of Yeah. Now, one of the most amazing things that I have run into about this house right there, World War I came through. <clears throat> they were trying to raise money. Sergeant York spoke from the upstairs out to the people of Gallatin. Sergeant York came through here. So, 
Now, again, raising money. Did he spend the night? I have no idea. I probably stayed with uh, <clears throat> some of my friends up there. I probably spent the night. <laughs> They had a parade and they terminated at Langley Hall and everybody had on the lawn. And the last person that attended that died three or four months ago, Eileen Byers, who's 105. Wow. And she remembered that well in coming to y'all. Wow. She was, That's it again, uh, too. Oh, wow. And if you're going down 109 South, mm -hmm. uh, instead of going to Gill School, that road right there, 109 South, our road after one mile out of gas, it's kind of split to the left just to take it. That rock is still, still there. there. Some rock is there. Some rock is there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still there. No, it's down from one mile south. It's right on the road. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, oh. Please, I, we've got some tissues up here if anybody wants to cry. Yes. Langley Hall. Now these are postcards that came, well, I'd like to see who they were sent them to. Nobody's printed on that one. But I, I made a few, this one's a lot. They've added some color to it. Let me go back. Yeah. I've got quite a few of those if you get around and look through them. We didn't print up a whole lot of those. Uh, you'll have to ask my um, <coughs> administrator over here since I'm just a teacher and these are my Why did we learn that? Well, Katie mm. Trials was homemade and built house 193. She wasn't married until she was beyond childbearing age and she married Mr. W.Y. Allen. And when they died, she left it to her first cousin, Ms. Will Gill, who was a trial um, before she married. And her son inherited it, and he didn't want it to hear it until about 1965. Mm -hmm. His wife didn't want him to do it, but she said it's his. He tore it down, he had a mind of his own. Where down. was it located? Still got a rock fence out there. Still got a rock fence out there. Hall. And in about 1960, and four years before that, Ms. Edna Hill would have a tea mm -hmm. for the high school yep. senior girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I, I went there at one point mm -hmm. to the tea, and uh, that was shortly before it was torn down. It's she had it all done over inside, yeah, we, 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 and she was ready to have the outside fixed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Remember what matter what year it was torn down? 65. 65. Yeah. Okay. Now this next one, I just bumped into it and it came right on. Now this is up on the square. Hope it doesn't shock you. But we had undertakers on our Galvin Square. <laughs> I cannot pick which building that is. I do not know exactly where it is. There's, <clears throat> There's the names on it, if anybody's connected to this name. They said this postcard was sent. Oh, yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you recognize it? Yeah, it was postmarked here. Maybe somebody else owned it. Yeah, it's got the name on 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 that's the same one. Eh? And what was that? Is that a tree that cut down? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if anybody does any research, if you can find that name, that would be unbelievable to figure out. Yeah, of course. Jerry, Bob, Bobby and I were wondering if the Tabor could be related to Pauline Tabor from Bowling Green. I have no idea. picked up on that. <laughs> now, this is about two streets right over here behind us. This, well, not the one on my next picture. There it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've seen that. This is our 1947 Union High School, the Red Devils. Now, if you're connected in any way to these people, on the back of this postcard, it has their names. And if I'm not mistaken, it was just about two streets over, right over here behind us. Winchester. 
The Union High School, Fred Devils, undefeated in 1947. And there they are. Now, I would say chances are half that crowd still alive. But I couldn't promise you that. And I got I can't. Anybody, when, when we're through, I put the names are on the back of this card if you have time to take a look at it. But there it is. There's their names. See that postcard's going to Detroit, Michigan. Walter Hardy. Yeah. Don't let me move too fast, but we're down to about 20 more. Now, this is not a postcard, but this is when, uh, 1938, we had a national airmail week. And this was Gallatin left out of here. Uh, if you've ever heard us talk about the balloon, the buffalo balloon, things happen balloon-wise. This is an airplane situation that happened right there from Gallatin, Tennessee. Going to California. There we go. Stamps, four cents and two cents. I'm telling you, well, before you leave, you need to see these Albert Gallatin stamps for one and one-fourth cents. If you didn't buy four for a nickel, I would hate that to change that. <laughs> now, I'm going to have to go back to my uh, principal here and ask him. This is Kentucky Day at the Gallatin Fair. Is this over on Bly Street? No. No? This is where McDonald's is on National Park. Oh, did y'all hear that? He said this is where our McDonald's restaurant is located. I was on Evergreen Farm and um, that's where the Gallatin Bell Seminary was. And at the seminary left, it became the fairgrounds. And then the fairgrounds moved across the street to where it is now. Yeah. Now, if you're interested in that, 1906, 1908 is what it says on this card, I believe. And it was mailed all the way to Mount Julia. <laughs> right there for one penny. What's the significance of Kentucky Day? I mean, Kentucky. Kentucky Day? Yeah. They just had different days for, for different organizations, different people. Just whatever. State fair, same yeah. way. And that card, that photo on the wall is a little dark, but it's, it's clear. It's clear here. Mm -hmm. well, it is dark anyway. But, yeah. Would you be in conjunction with the Kentucky Derby? No. 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 Uh, we have lots of horse people here in our summer county. There's the back of Okay. Now, before Gallatin Bridges came up, <laughs> we had ferries that took us across. And that's where we got the road name Coal Ferry. And uh, what's the other ferry? Woods Ferry. Woods Ferry. Woods Ferry. <laughs> Downs family ran this ferry. Frankly, Downs, family. And there they are. And I'm not sure. Oh, now here's what it says. Ferry over the Cumberland River, close to Gallatin, Tennessee. Ferry was one half mile to the left. Not favorable. Run. Run because of the... Down below. Don't say that word. <laughs> My mom wouldn't like that. This was, let's see if I get it. And again, I've got the postcard. Again, before you leave, I have all the originals up here if you want to maybe figure out who wrote it. Now, here's downtown Gallatin. It sure has changed quite a bit. Let's see if I can find a year on this. 1931. And our people in Gallatin, somebody knew somebody. Chicago, Illinois, they're One cent. One cent. In there. 1905, that's the Yeah. There's the back of it. Now, not that it's Gallatin, Tennessee, but because of the tractors in here. 
this is probably one of the most expensive cards that I have. Again, the people that collect these, Gallatin, Tennessee, never heard of them. But they go into, let's see, this is from 1915, and that's our downtown square. And nobody had written a word on the back of this. So there's our courthouse. Now, I have a, somewhere up here, I sure do. I don't know much about this gentleman. Opie Reed. Reed. Opie Reed. He wrote 65 books. And he was a law officer or something? Born in 1952? No, he was a newspaper man. But if you get a chance to look at that, I could, where, where was his house? Where was, where was his? Well, there was a little cabin up there in Portland where they stayed for a few months, but they lived away on Franklin Street. His uh -huh. father was a carriage maker in Nashville and they lost everything. They came to Portland and came to Galveston and he went to New York City College when it was in the Howard mm -hmm. buildings and became a writer and Mark Twain came and spoke to him and uh, inspired him and, and he wrote 65 did Mark, Mark Twain came to Galveston? Mm -hmm. He did. No way. I need to write that on my who came to Galveston. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm over here in the 60s, and this place was hot. Right over behind First Baptist Church on the corner. And it's, the, hey, and I hate to shock you, when you leave, it's still standing over there. Yep. It's still there. I see, yeah, I see. I kept thinking of it. It's a great There's the back of it. Miss Griffin. Bertha Vertrace Griffin. She and her sister, who was the other lady listed below, were yeah. the daughters of Peter Vertrace. And I don't mean to shock anybody, but the price has now gone up to a nickel. <laughs> so if you if you need a tissue, you could cry, and, oh, it's up to a nickel now. What's the date on that one, Jerry? Oh, uh, uh, 69. He said 69. Late 69. Got it right there? Again, stop by and say. Now here's a postcard that I cannot identify whatsoever. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. And that's my original thought. But I'm taking this postcard. It's not any building in this county. That I've said that, and it doesn't look like the Fitzgerald. Now originally I thought it was. It was this card was postmarked in Gallatin, <coughs> and it was written oh, <coughs> Cotton Town. So, but again, I don't know what it was. Let me check with my principal over here. No, it's not anything around here. But I don't. Know, but you know, there's the bag. You might know the people if you want to look at it. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. Okay. Now, as far as my Gallatin postcards, I've got more and more and more. Uh, these were the best ones. These were the best ones. I've reproduced two of our Gallatin books. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to sell these. I've never asked. But from 1937, we were 150 years old. Inside this, as far as readings, I love the reading part because it will give you just a paragraph and it tells you the most fantastic information that I've read. But most people pick this up and they look at the ads of all the stores up on the square. Um, who's in, here's Gallatin um, County Cooperative at the Creamery. It's people's names in there. This is absolutely phenomenal. It talks a little bit about Beth Page and Everett Westmoreland. Yeah. But this is going, look at the back, this is going down a lot forward road. I can't pick that out. That's Pops Lackey's car in that picture. I couldn't tell you where they're standing, but that's going down a lot forward road. So. That's his property. That's the Lackey property too, by the way. <laughs> She was asking about yeah, went from Lock 4 Road all the way to the fairground. Right. 
This was from 1937 when Galveston <coughs> celebrating 150 years. I've got that. I'm sure you've seen this. I have this original book at my house also. In 1888, we had to put together the laws of Gallatin and put it in a book. And it talks about all the law and ordinances. What is strange, on our downtown square, we had a law. My wife and I laugh about this all the time. Male dogs could be up there. Female dogs, it's against the law. <laughs> and this was in our city of Gallatin. Now, how do you... Uh, don't get into it. We're not male females. You know, I'm in school system. But this is amazing what we've got. And it breaks it down because everything has to go through the mayor's office. Uh, I don't want you to come up and look at this. That's a book of entertainment. Entertainment right here. I don't want to tell you about page 110. There's a law against lewd women. <laughs> And it was actually, this was printed in 1876, and those L-E-W-D uh, -E women, you'll have to look that up in your dictionary, they had to be in by 8 o'clock. Or if they started finding that person, they find her for $8. For being out after 8 o'clock. They're in a lot of money back then. Back then, yeah. Uh, keeper of the workhouse, this is the board of fire for the fire people. Um, even the cemetery, our Gallatin Cemetery, and it told how much it cost based on your age to be buried at our Gallatin Cemetery. It's in here. It's amazing. If you were under like 13 years old, uh, it was three dollars or something. It's, it's all in here. But the best thing, and I think you'll recognize some of these names, it starts in the back with the officers of the town of Gallatin. It started in 1822. And it tells you the names of the mayor. And it tells you his, his commissioners, if I could use that word. And they're back here. <coughs> but this is so amazing. If you have any relatives that have names that are connected to this, this is so fantastic. These are the two that I have printed so far. Um, I don't write books, but I have a group that's helping me on these. If you've ever heard of Howard Female Institute, I've got their book from 1910 that they sent out trying to get people to come to our Howard Female Institute. Well, this is a college at that time. That's one of the cards right there. But even in the back, there are the names of the people in the previous years that had graduated. So if you have any relatives or you've got someone that's connected, uh, when this book is printed, I'll see you sometime around. But you can look at this tonight, but please be careful. I don't know whose card this is. This card was in the back. I get with my principal here. Miss Roscoe was probably Bertha. Bertha Roscoe. So I don't know if this was her book or not. But this is uh, in process right now. And it tells where these people were from. And there wasn't a tremendous amount of Gallatin people. But they tried to recruit people from all over America. All right, I've got this one that I'm working on. This one does not belong to me. The school that was in this building, I've got a yearbook from 1924. And it goes through... Uh, got the pictures of the faculty. If you're related to any of our teachers or people that's in this, let me show you the picture of the principal. So if I can quickly find it. Yes, got it right here. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. When our county's looking for names to name schools after, I mean, that would be a perfect one right there. But this has got, when, when I have this redone, I don't know <coughs> this book. But again, it goes into the girls' basketball team. There they are. I mean, that probably the biggest girl there is probably 5'7". Yeah. You know, who knows? <laughs> I used to coach basketball, by the way. And it gives the score when they played Hendersonville and Columbia, and it goes on and on. 
out in front of our, right over here, there's the football team. So when this is published, I mean, when I get it reprinted, maybe I can speak again to y'all. What, what school is that you said? It's Central um, High School. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to mention, I think in 1926, the Gallatin girls team was state runner-up to uh, Hume Fogg. That was when it was like an invitational tournament, and Annette Hutton was the coach. Well, they and when we were putting together all of the state tournament and sub-state banners and signs to put up in the high school, I came across that, uh -huh. and I found that uh, annual, 1926 annual at the teacher center. Were they at that time, 26, called Gallatin Central, uh, Central, Central. Central. Central High School? Because this was Central, that was right here. Yeah, that's it. There you go. So, I don't know, if, if somebody will remember Annette Hutton, but mm -hmm. she was the coach of the team. I think they finished nine and six. That was their record. They were state runner up. She was coached for many years. Mm -hmm. She was still a math teacher in the 60s. We all have. My, in fact, my father and I had her. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Well, she might want to look through this. I don't, I don't my know. My mother's had her. <laughs> Did Sarah Franklin take over after her? Or was it I, she came in long after long after. after. <laughs> she, I, I didn't even know. Our, our Gallatin High School mm -hmm. had the fifth grade in there. You know how we separate now? We call it middle school. We call it elementary school. And we call it high school. But this is the fifth graders that were in our school. And here's their picture and their name. So I can't wait to get this, you know, redone. But it's just. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing between the Gallatin stamps <laughs> for one and one fourth, if you want to send one of those, all the way down to General Payne. And, I, and this may be another talk, but I have in this book tells me right over here on the square they hung 106 men. And they were probably anywhere from 13 years old to mm -hmm. a, a grandfather's that were hung right over there. You're saying, um, Pardon? Are you saying hung as in? Yes. Hang, hung, have hanged. Right. <laughs> now, this, that 106 does not count because I know some stories when they would go out to somebody's house and maybe they didn't like the husband and the wife and they'd take their, their son and put him on a horse and take him about a mile or so and just shoot him right there and send a soldier back and say, oh, oh by the way, you can go get your boy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So this is, uh, yeah, this is our union folks. But this is yeah, this is available on the internet. You ever go through eBay and find it? This is really good. Okay. I do have Gallatin books right here. Uh, this is the drawing. Of our downtown, if you, well, this is during the Civil War. If you'd like to look at that, it's time to leave. Uh, World War One, there. I've got books that are right here. We can always talk about that. How many governors of Tennessee did we have from Summer County? Is it four? Three or four. They've got a picture in our courthouse of uh, the administration building. I think there's four. That's Pop Quiz. What's the name? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> we had four Summer County. We were born in Summer County. We were born in County. There you go. Anywhere from yes. excellent reading here. <laughs> For us people that are just simple readers, that is one of the best. I do hear it's a picture book. Yes, you can just go through it by year, by year, by year, by year, by year, by year, by year and it's a good Okay. Yeah. That's a nice historic summer county. Anybody have a question? I don't know what time it is. It's five or seven. I made it. <laughs> Anybody have a comment or a qu oh, we got one back there. Yes, I have, um Two questions, and and I should know the answer to. I mean, I did your off long, long ago. Um, 
Were there city directories published for Gallatin, like starting in the 1880s, maybe? Not that far maybe. back. We've got them at the Sonoma County Archives, but they don't go that far back. How about insurance books? There if you're some, asking about what a house was, the insurance records are fantastic. There's some of that in the WW Part E papers, the archives. Okay, I thought there, they might be down at the state of but I've just never had to do it. If you ever need any questions about marriages of Summer County, <laughs> 1787 to 1838, right here. I'm not sure exactly who published this, but this is one of the books I have. If you want, before you leave, you'd like to look up somebody. Got it right here. All these are right here for you to go through. Uh, I won't mention any names, but my principal helped put together these two. No, no, no. Oh, not that. I might have one 90 now, I've got 89, 87 on my right. That's Bill Brinkley. Bill Brinkley. Next Tuesday. Bill Brinkley. 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 But, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much history you have. It is absolutely amazing. There you go. They're all up here when you're ready to go. Anybody have any last questions? Can you guys some pictures of some of your schooling? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have copies of all these at my house. But that's ones that are just, I only have a hundred of those, and those are just, these are just about gone. There's so many people that are amazed. Well, they were right, I would have that book. Everybody should have that book. I got the original, but it's, I have these for copies. What are you selling tonight? Oh, uh, <laughs> your discount. <laughs> <laughs> these are $20. Okay, good. <coughs> and uh, these are 15. Yes, ma'am. Can you get them tonight? Oh, sure. My wife is right here. She's <laughs> We've got chains. <laughs> if you sit down with this and, and your spouse calls me on the phone because she's lost you for an hour and a half, two hours, I'll get back with you. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's so much good reading. Like Mr. Sullivan right here, he likes to read things like this. He's one of my good friends. But there it is. Any last questions before we go? You tell them about the shoe factory uptown. There was another one out on Factory Lane. They called one of them number one and the other one number two. I've got, where's my big long picture of Pastor? Okay. I was going to take it home to you. I've got That's the one that's, that was here. Yes, I've got a big picture about that one also. Here. I can't remember. Was this number two or number one? <laughs> I mean, it, Gallatin history is so amazing. Uh, when I talked to the Rotary Club and I had like a 15 minute slot and I didn't speak much of this, I talked about Bud Rogan, world's tallest. I uh, went right into the uh, Buffalo balloon that came right across through here from the first email out. Uh, not the email. <laughs> but it's amazing. And I'm telling you, my principal, excuse me, since I'm the teacher, my principal here is, he's probably lived through lots of things. I moved here in 62. I moved here in 1940. 1840. <laughs> yeah, I was here in 1840. Oh, I'm not hurting. That was another life. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to help if you have any questions as we close. Uh, it's all here. If you like to come look at it. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Dad, it's for you to add some more books. Oh, don't forget, next Tuesday night, Belma Brinkley will be here. Hey, thank you so much for showing up.